Right now I'll be sharing with you guys five of the biggest lessons I've personally learned from John Meadows over the years from reading his blog posts on T Nation, from watching his videos on his channel and even from talking to him on Skype which you can see on my channel as well but John Meadows definitely had a huge impact on the lifting community he was a great man inside and outside of it, very humble, always willing to learn and if you guys have been watching my channel for a while you know that I've been preaching a lot of his philosophies from day one, from the rear delt training, from a couple of other different things. And I thought it was really important on my part to make this kind of video to show the biggest lessons I personally learned from, from a lifting standpoint. So let's get into it. Metals row. This is basically an exercise where you take a barbell, put it in the corner of a landmine, and you start rowing, one arm at a time. You've probably seen people use an offset stance and do one arm at a time like so for the lats. The metals row is more focused on the upper back rear delt region to give your back more of that pop from the side view. So basically the same principle, we're gonna stand on the side of the barbell, gonna go with an offset stance, as opposed to having the feet right next to each other, with an offset stance. And basically, if I'm rowing with my left arm, I want my left foot to be back, and I wanna keep a lot of that weight on my left heel. So I'm gonna go like so. I also, you notice I'm using 35 pound plate, if you use a 45, it's dramatically gonna cut the range of motion, so you wanna use a 25 pound plate or 35 pound. As far as the hand's concerned, you could put it either on your knee or you can even put your elbow on your knee. I'm pretty sure John was a bigger advocate of putting the elbow on the knee as well. I'm gonna lift it a slight inch off the ground and then we're gonna roll like so. Great exercise overall. I'm personally a bigger advocate of doing them off of a bench. When I first started doing them, I was initially doing them the regular traditional way. But I got this idea from Ben Bruno a couple years back where basically just do it off a bench. Grab a bench like so. And this takes a bit of stability out of it. So I can really reach with the opposite hand. Same principle, I'm grabbing the barbell and I'm just gonna roll like so. So that's the Meadows row. Okay, so secondly, and still staying on the topic of back, John Meadows is a big advocate of the rack dead from roughly the mid shin for building up the whole back overall. We're talking about the upper back, the lats, and a lot of thickness in the erectors. So obviously he pulled from the ground before, but he was still a big advocate of these pulls from the mid shin. So if you come around, you'll see my rack wasn't low enough. Still goes to this height, so I basically just took a block just put under for the sake of this example, but it's roughly around mid shin. Do it right here. Boom. So I recently made a video about seven things I used to preach, and I was talking about the rack pull above the knee back in the day. This is a long time ago. The rack pull above the knee is much different from the rack pull where you're pulling around mid shin. Mid shin, the weights you could use are dramatically reduced, but it still takes certain muscle groups out of the equation and puts more focus in the back. You could use a lot less like leg drive and the rack pull at mid shin is just one of those lifts where it's just great for back hypertrophy. This is why you see a lot of bodybuilders, for example, using them. They even pull off blocks pull mid shin is because it just buys a bit more of the back if that's what we're really trying to target. So now let's get into some presses. If you guys have watched a lot of John's workouts, you'll realize that oftentimes when he was pressing either with dumbbells or with barbells, he would use a slight incline or a slight decline. I'm referring to like a 10 degree, maybe even a 15 degree. And his whole reasoning behind this was that it's a lot easier on the shoulders. And he was also very influenced by Dorian Yates in this case, because Dorian Yates is doing the same thing as well. And I know that other coaches like Jason Frugia, for example, who I've done Q and A's with, they were also inspired by Dorian Yates. And it seems like a lot of people like these low inclines, especially for bodybuilding purposes. And I actually like it as well. I personally feel my pecs more off a low incline or a low decline bench. And I encourage you guys to try out the same thing and report back in the comment section. So basically you just grab the dumbbells. There's certain benches, for example, that already have a 15 degree 
attachment or setting to it, but this one doesn't, so I just put boxes under. This is roughly 10 to 15 degrees. John also didn't touch his chest on his press. You'll notice he was always a bit shy. So, he was always a bit shy of the chest. We never touch, be right here. Probably felt more tension in them. I personally feel these a lot in my pecs. If you can work up the heavy weights, you know, 100 pounds plus, 10 reps, chest should be pretty big. So fourthly, let's get into some hamstring philosophies. This is hands down one of my favorite ones on the list and I'm pretty sure John was highly influenced by Tom Platts, who's known as the quad father, who would really torture his hamstrings. But John's whole philosophy, or at least one of his philosophies on hamstring training was we're gonna train the hamstring curl, also known as the leg curl, before squatting. So he would use this as a form of warming up, but he would take the hamstring curl a lot more seriously. And what do I mean by this? He would do what's called mechanical drop sets. So as you guys can see right here, I'm just using the one arm, the one leg at a time for the sake of this example. But let's say using two legs at a time and to see the variation. John was a big advocate of reaching failure on your leg curls. So you, can't not, you cannot do any more. Then once you reach positive failure, we're gonna get into eccentrics. So he would just come up quick and then just lower slow as he could, just to milk the eccentric. Then when he could no longer do that, he would just get into heavy iso holds. So you see, you reach negative failure, you reach concentric failure, and you reach isometric failure. So you're just fighting for your life just to hold in this position. Okay, so the last thing on the list, I can't talk about John Meadows without talking about what I've mentioned the most on this channel since day one. I took a break from talking about this, but actually recently, got back into it, which is the rear delt swing. Everybody who's been following this channel for a while, you know that I was a huge advocate of this. For all of you who don't know, it's basically a bottom half rear delt fly when you're chest supported, where you're solely focused on the rear delt. Now you'll notice, for example, what happens if you take a, do a rear delt swing with very light weights? It's too light. But with, the, with that light weight though, it feels great when you're at the top half. But I'm assuming that John's philosophy was we're gonna really overload that bottom half. So basically all you're gonna do is you're gonna take heavier weights. You're gonna take the dumbbells for example, them right here. Do these chest supported to really take the stability out of it. And John was not a big advocate of, you know, eight to 12 reps on these. He was a bigger advocate of the higher reps really gonna torch the rear delts, 30 to 60 repetitions. And the fact that you're chest supported, it just takes a lot of the stability out of it. So he was not going all the way up, it was, but he wasn't staying here either because there's no range, there's no active range of motion here. So he'd be like right here, shoulder width, and he would just let them swing. But notice on the swing, on the eccentric, he would control it. So he'd go a lot heavier than this, So a nice cue with the rear delts is we're trying to get our hands as far away from us as possible, but while staying in an active range. So it'd be like right. As far away from us as possible while staying close to the ground. So like this. That's basically the rear delt swing. 30 to 60 repetitions. So really torch those rear delts. And if I were to add my little spin on it today, I would personally do that. And I would actually superset it with something like this, where I would do the top half, like so. So that pretty much wraps it up. Those are the five biggest things I personally learned from watching John Meadows over the years, and the Q and A I had with them, from reading his old articles on T Nation, and I'm really happy that he had a, such a great impact in the fitness world. He really did inspire tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people worldwide to start working out, gave a lot of great quality advice, and may he rest in peace. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I wanna know in the comment section below, what are the biggest lessons you guys have personally learned 
from watching or just reading John Meadows over the years, I would like to know. Maybe I could add these to the list. And with that being said, I'll see you guys next time.